String theory addresses the question, what is the world made of? What are the fundamental building blocks of matter? If you take a piece of matter, such as an apple, and break it down to its smallest parts, you'll come to atoms. If you break down atoms, you'll find they are made of three components, electrons, protons, and neutrons. Protons and neutrons are composed of smaller particles called quarks. There are six kinds of quarks, and they have interesting names, like up quarks, down quarks, charm quarks, strange quarks, bottom quarks, and top quarks. But what are quarks made of? The basic idea behind string theory is that fundamental particles, such as quarks, are actually composed of tiny things called strings. Professor Brian Greene, in his book The Elegant Universe, describes strings as vibrating loops of energy. If string theory is correct, then the entire world, actually the whole universe, is fundamentally made up of one thing, vibrating loops of energy. But that's not all there is to it. These vibrating loops, or strings, oscillate in different ways. Kind of like the strings of a musical instrument, oscillating with different frequencies to produce different pitches. According to string theory, the strings, or loops of energy that the world is made of, oscillate in different ways to produce all the different elements of matter which make up the entire universe. God is constantly speaking to us through his creation in a language without words. And what we are seeing and hearing in creation, or what we ought to see and hear, is that sort of ongoing reverberation, so to speak, of God's voice, his command to let there be. Now that's a pretty awesome thought, that God's voice can be heard right now all around us through creation. And Romans 1 tells us that we're all without excuse. He's speaking to every single one of us every day. The early church saw creation as a book that speaks of God, a talking book, if you will. And if God is speaking to us, the proper thing for us to do and the reasonable thing for us to do is to respond. It's just plain polite to respond when someone speaks to us. The biblical worldview sees creation in a way that's really unique. It doesn't view creation as something to be worshipped. It doesn't view creation as divine. And yet creation is something that invokes worship. That is, it ought to. It's a constant invocation, so to speak, to worship and to serve the one who's speaking to us.